Hello everybody, my name is Roy Oshirov and today we're going to talk about automated builds and continuous integration and the difference between them. You can always find out more at beautifulbuilds.com. First, let's talk about the difference between automated builds and continuous integration. For a lot of people, there doesn't seem to be any difference. A lot of people think about those things as the same thing. I don't. I think about them as two different separate things and that makes a big difference in the way that I structure and automate my application and its deployment. The way I think about it is that automated builds are what I do. For example, unit tests, integration tests, compilation, etc. And continuous integration is when I do that. For example, it would be the triggers. I do unit testing and uh, compilation every time I check in the code, etc. So continuous integration is usually a dumb trigger, the way I think about it, and automated builds are the build scripts. So here, for example, we can say, okay, automated builds are all the scripts that I write using any kind of tool, and continuous integration are the CI servers, the continuous integration servers that I might, that I might use. So here's the way they work together. A CI server might trigger a build script, and for example, in this case, the build script can be of any kind of, uh, of tool. For example, uh, a CI server can be Jenkins, TeamCD, Hudson, and a build script can be written in Rake, Ant, MS Build, Scones, Paver, whatever. And what's different about this is that if we see that there is um, that those roles are different, we can also separate concerns between those two different types of tools. So the way I think about it is that CI servers are part of operational knowledge. They, they have knowledge about the environment like FTP servers, passwords, locations, uh, and build scripts have knowledge about the application. They're the development structure. And I try not to mix those two different knowledge, pieces of knowledge uh, with each other. Um, because when I talk about application code and operation configuration, a lot of times an application's code and its structure may change many times a day, whereas operation configuration can change in different times of the day or in, uh, in a much uh, slower pace. And if we mix those two up, we would have to change one with the other. Um, so what I would recommend is that when you have uh, these two types of tools, we have CI servers and we have build scripts, I would recommend that the build scripts would actually be in our application source control, whereas the CI servers are either not in source control or all their uh, configuration is in a separate source control because it's basically a different type of application. It changes on different uh, basis. What can happen if you don't do this? Right, A lot of... Uh, um, a lot of teams, a lot of projects um, actually don't have build scripts or they have the build scripts literally inside the CI server. So in my mind, they uh, integrate operational and development in the same module. And that would create uh, maintenance problems uh, the, or more maintenance than, than needed. So for example, what happens when you mix up uh, CI and the scripts together in the same location? Um, here's one case. So imagine that we, in the CI server, we have a script that runs a test in a folder called tests. Now that was in version one. Tomorrow I'm gonna move to version two of my application. And when I move to version two, I realize, you know what? I would rather separate the, my tests into slow and fast. So I have, instead of a single test folder, I would have a unit test folder and an integration test folder. Now, if I didn't consider things thoroughly enough, or if I don't know everything that's running in the CI server, um, I might just re re change the test, um, the, change the test uh, folder and have unit test and integration test instead of it. I could also have knowledge about what the script is running in the CI server, but then that's the whole point. I want to decouple these pieces of knowledge. Now, because in this case they're coupled together, when I change the folder name, I also have to go to the CI server and change the script in the CI server. That causes me to change, uh, uh, to have the knowledge in two locations. So I'm repeating myself in many ways, and it causes me to have two changes instead of one change. 
So in this case, coupling the application source structure to the operations knowledge forces me to change the operation knowledge on every simple application source change uh, that is coupled. Let's look at, uh, at the opposite case. In this case, I might have a CI server, and the CI server has um, is basically running a script for tests. This is a this is a this is how I would solve it basically. I have a CI server, and I've solved it by having both uh, by having the script that runs the tests inside the, the application source control. So in version one, the script knows about the structure of the code, so it knows to run folder tests. Uh, in version two, the, the folder has changed and I'm also changing the script, but it's all changed in one single location. So the source control, actually the source knows about its own structure, the, so, the source knows how to build itself. And this is a more maintainable way, you keep everything in the same location. Here's uh, another problematic uh, structure. In this case, we couple uh, the other way around. So let's say we have an old FTP on the top and we're moving to a new FTP. That's an operational piece of knowledge. The application shouldn't care where it gets deployed to. It just needs to be deployed somewhere. Uh, but in this case, the scripts uh, are in the source control in the application, but they also have coupling to the name of the FTP. So when the FTP name has to ch changes, the application source control also has to change. So I actually need to create a new version, subversion of even of a minor, to change the source control to the new FTP location. So again, I have to repeat myself in two different places. It would be much better if I could only change the name in one single place and then have everything just continue to work. Because I coupled operations knowledge to application source control, then, uh, and then I force myself to change the application source when I make simple operational changes. How would I solve that? Well, in this case, instead of having the build script not uh, having the it, uh, having it have knowledge of the name of the FTP, I will have the build script use an environment variable and have the CI server which invokes the build script simply set an environment variable to the new name of the FTP. So then the name of the FTP only exists in one location and that is the CI server. And the build script is fully, how should I say it, almost stupid. It deploys to an FTP, it doesn't care where. It's, think about it like dependency injection um, or inversion of control, whereas the CI server tells the build script what to do. Uh, and the build script doesn't care where it goes, it just cares that it can do the right things. So this decoupling allows me to have better main maintainability and also keep all the knowledge, all the operation knowledge in a single place. So that's this very, very short introduction to the difference between automated builds and uh, continuous integration. You can find more information at beautifulbuilds.com or just contact me at Roy Osharov on Twitter. Cheers.